Hey guys and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In the previous file explorer video, this one on your right, we accessed the Unity file explorer and we displayed it a, to an image on the screen. However, we did run into some issues and we could not uh, build this out to a device and it would crash and give out an error. So this video is merely an update to that. This video, you can build this out and it will work both on your editor as well as on your desktop. So let's give this a try and let's see what it's going to look like. So we can press play. I'm going to open my file explorer. I can choose a picture and I'll open it up and you see it displays nicely here. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you quickly how it has an executable as well. So I've just opened up the folder where I built out my executable in. I'm going to run my file explorer.exe and there you see my application running. So it opens up nicely and if I click open file, file browser, I can select a image again and it displays nicely onto the canvas. So with that being said, let's get started. So guys, before we move on, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and help us grow this channel so we can create more awesome videos for you and tutorials for you guys. So let's get started. First of all, I'm going to right click and create a canvas. Then I'm going to right click and add an image. I'm going to go into my inspector and I'm just going to select shift and alt and stretch this across the screen. I'm going to change the color to a color that I like and I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to zoom out a bit. The next thing I'm going to need is a raw image and a button. So I'm going to right click on the canvas. I'm going to go down to UI. I'm going to select raw image. I'm going to go to my multi tool. I'm going to go to the center of the tool and just scale that out a bit. I'm going to move this up. And the next thing I'm going to need is a button. So I'll go to button text mesh pro. I'll import my essentials, close that off, bring my button down, scale that up a bit. And I'm going to rename this button to say open file explorer. Then I'm going to drop the font size down a bit so that everything fits nicely. Okay. And I think we're good to go there. The next thing we're going to need is a empty game object that's going to hold our script. I'm just going to go down to right click, go down to create empty and I'm going to just reset these transform values and I'm going to rename this to file manager. I'm going to add a component. I'm going to say new script and I'm going to call this script file manager and I'll just call it update now so that we don't get it confused with the previous video. I'm going to say create an add and I'm going to double click it to open up in Visual Studio. So before we get started, I'd like to give a shout out to Sri Yon Khan, who really assisted me and helped me uh, with getting this tutorial together for you guys. Basically, he did a awesome wrapper to make everything work, not only in the editor, but also in the build. So big shout out to him. I'll leave the link to his channel below so you guys can check him out. He has some really awesome stuff. He also helped me with the uh, wrapper libraries as well and I've just modified it a bit just to make it simpler for you guys to understand and not deviating too far from our previous tutorial where we did create the file manager script already. So what you're going to do is you're going to head over to my GitHub repository and you're going to download the entire package from there. When you do download that, I have everything set up already for you guys with the libraries and everything already set up. So head over to the link and download the files and head over back to Unity. Okay, awesome. So now that you have all of the files and the package installed in your Unity project, let's get started with our script. What we're going to do first is similar to the previous file manager, we're going to need a public raw image and we're going to call this raw image. And we need to include our library that's using unity engine.ui. Next thing we need is a function to actually open up our file browser. So we can just say public void and we can call this open file browser. Okay, so once that's done, what we're going to do now is we are going to include another library called using another file browser. So this is the wrapper that he wrote. Let's just use it because we don't want to reinvent the wheel. So that's his wrapper. So the reason that it's giving me this quickly is because I didn't 
uh, import the files. So let me do that quickly. So now that I have the files imported or the libraries imported, this squiggly line goes away. So let's start with our first. We're going to create a new object. We're going to call it BP and that's going to equal to new browser properties. So the BP stands for browser properties. We're going to close that off. Next thing we want to do is fill out some, uh, we want to populate some of those uh, values. So if you go into the wrapper that he wrote, you go into plugins, another file browser, we go into the file browser. And if you look at the script, I've cleared it up a bit just so that it makes sense to you and it makes sense to this video. So in the browser properties, you see it takes a title, initial directory, it takes a filter and the filter is an extension to what files are we looking for. Okay, and it takes a filter index. So what we're going to do is we're going to say browser properties, browser properties dot filter. And we want to filter it to all of the image types that we might have on our machine. So we can say image files. We'll open that up and we can say dot JPEG. It could be JPG. It could be dot JPEG. It could be dot JPE. It could be dot JFIF or we could be using a PNG file. And on the other side here, we want to just say the same thing. We'll close that off. And the next thing we want to set the browser properties dot filter index to zero. So we'll say filter index is equal to zero. Okay, that's done. The next thing we want to do is we want to take care of the path. So what we can say is new file browser dot open file browser, which is one of the functions in the wrapper, we'll just say browser properties path, which is what we're going to pass into our uh, I enumerator just now. And then we're just going to use a Lambda expression and we're going to call our start coroutine function. Our I enumerator function is going to be called load image and it's going to take in a path. I'm going to just close that off and I'm going to close that off as well. So let's create this load image function. So we'll say IE numerator. The reason we use IE numerator, if you look in our previous video, is because we want to wait for a connection or we want to wait for the path first. So we'll say load image and it takes in a string path. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to get the path. So we'll say using, and this is the way that uh, we're going to be doing it now, just so that it works not only in the editor, but on build as well. So just follow along. We'll say using Unity Web Request and we'll just call it Unity Web Request as an abbreviation. Then if I go control dot, I can just include the using Unity engine dot networking and that quickly goes away. Next, what I want to do is equal this to Unity Web Request Texture because remember, we want to get the texture of that path and we'll just say get texture and we'll pass through that path. The next thing we want to do is, you know that after, when you're using an I enumerator, you need a yield return. So we're going to say yield return and we're going to wait for the request. So we'll say unity web request dot send web request. And then we're going to do a small check and we're going to say if unity web request dot is network error or unity web request dot is HTTP error. Then we just want to throw a debug error and we'll just close that off. If there's no error and everything goes fine, what we want to do is we want to create a new texture and we can call this unity web request texture is equal to download handler texture dot get content and we're going to pass in the unity web request. Then what we want to do finally, after we get that texture, we want to set it to our raw image. So we'll say raw image dot texture is equal to unity web request texture. And that's it. That's all the things that we need. Awesome. So everything's looking nice here. Let's head over back to unity and set everything up. Let's go to our file manager and let's drag our raw image in there. Let's save our work and now let's hit play and see if everything works fine. So there you have it. We click open file explorer. Nothing happens. Reason being we didn't hook the button up. So let's head over to the button. Go all the way down to your on click event. We'll add an on click event. We'll drag the file manager in here. 
go to our function select our script and we can just select our function called open file browser we hit play again we'll hit open file explorer and there you see my file explorer opens nicely and here you see what we typed in previously in the uh, filter whatever we type in there will be displayed here and that's our filter so I can choose anything else I can choose another picture and there you see it changes as well so I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope this worked for you guys if you having any troubles please comment down below or if it even worked for you comment down below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button I'll see you guys later cheers